The prompt is ready. The models are ready. Go, go, go. What you saw there was two LLMs running in parallel on my machine. And this is possible thanks to the Alama 0.1.33 release. So the big ticket item of that release was Llama 3 support. But if we scroll down a little bit, we see a section called experimental concurrency features. And there are a couple of new environment variables. So the first one is a Llama underscore num underscore parallel. And so that one lets us handle multiple requests simultaneously for the same model. And then the second one is a Llama underscore max underscore loaded underscore models. And that lets us load multiple models simultaneously. So i.e. we can run multiple different models at the same time. In this video, we'll see how to use those environment variables, but let's quickly remind ourselves how things were before. So I'm going to start up an Alama server on my machine, and then let's come over to the browser where we have a Streamlit app that lets us compare two models side by side for the same prompt. So I'm going to type in a prompt that my daughter always asks me, so can a Python eat a line? And we'll use Phi3 and Llama3, and then we'll click Generate. So it takes a little while to get going because it needs to load the model the first time, but you can see it's generated it for Llama3, and then afterwards it does Phi3. Now, if we run the prompt again, it will be a bit faster because both the models are already loaded and by default, they will remain in memory for five minutes, but it still runs one model, finishes it and then runs the other one. Now, let's see what happens if we start an Alama with Alama underscore max underscore loaded underscore models and we'll set that to two. So you could put it to whatever value you like, depending on how much memory you've got on your machine. If it, if it ha doesn't have enough memory to load it, it's still not going to load it. Let's come back to the stream app and we'll ask a different question. So can a cobra eat a tiger? Another question that my daughter asks. So we can see these are both now running at the same time. We can also change the model. So we could change it to be Phi3 and Gemma2. Notice this time it takes a little while for the new model to load. So Phi3 is actually finished before Gemma loads. But if we run them again, you can now see they are running at the same time. And Gemma's answer is very, very concise but we can't run the same model concurrently. So if we put it to Phi 3 twice, you'll notice that we're back again to that original problem where it runs one, finishes, runs the other one. And that's where the second environment variable is useful. So Alama underscore num underscore parallel. So we'll set that to two as well. And you can see now those are both running in parallel with the same model. Now I could have demoed all of this using the terminal, but I thought it'd be a bit more fun with Streamlit. So let me just quickly show you the code that we're using here. So this is the file and you can see we're using an async client and then we're using the Alama library as well to find a list of all the models and we're filtering it to only get Llama and Gemma family of models. So this filters out uh, any of the embedding models that I have on my machine and the Alama library is really cool. I think you'll, you'll want to have a look at a bit more at that if you're building any applications around Alama. If we come down a little bit, you can see the way we've set up the controls on the sidebar. And if we come down a little bit more, you can see how we're handling the right-hand side. So we've got some empty columns. So we've got meta one and meta two. So that's the meta information at the top that was telling us how long it took. And then we've got body one and body two, and that's where the actual text is being generated. If we come down a little bit more, you can see we've got run prompt where we pass in the placeholder. So that's for the text and the meta, and that's for the meta information. Then we've got a little token counter that's counting how many tokens are being generated. And then we call the async um, OpenAI API, and so that's going to call Alama, and then we pass in our messages. If we come down a little bit more, you can see we iterate over the stream. We, at the top, check whether we've got a, a chunk of content, write it into the placeholder, so kind of appending it to the stream text that we have already. And then at the bottom, you can see how we are c computing and rendering the meta information. And then if we go down one final time, you can see we're then using asyncio.gather to call those functions. So you could put in more if you wanted. If you want to have three models, you could do that as well. So I'll put the code in the description. And in the meantime, you want to check out this video I made about the Alama library.